I'm Jason Page, and welcome to Hartford Colonials kickoff for week two in the UFL. Week one couldn't have gone any better for the Colonials. They beat the Sacramento Mountain Lions 27 to 10 in front of a record regular season crowd here at Rentschler Field. Over 14,000 fans showed up to check out the Colonials victory. We're bringing you the show this week from the press box, but we were all over the place for the Colonials first game. We went and checked out some tailgating. We'll get you some of the highlights from that. And we'll have our weekly conversation with the head coach of the Colonials, Chris Palmer, will join us. Quarterback Josh McCown threw for a couple of touchdowns. We'll talk to him, get his take on what it's like to be a Hartford Colonial. But right now, in case you missed it, let's get a look at the highlights from the Colonials first victory. I know we're ready. Now all we have to do is get it going. Let's just get it going. Hey, let's go. Bring it in now. Hold on, hold three. One, two, three. Hold on. Okay, first down for the Colonials just on their side of uh, the 50-yard line. McCown's going to throw it again. He's looking deep. Cherry is the intended receiver, makes the catch, and is out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. There's a receiver down from the top of the screen. He's going to go that way. It is caught. It's a touchdown to Marquis White. Jim Dixon, the lone back. And he'll get the football this time. Get a nice block. He's inside the 15. And has another Colonial first down at the 12-yard line. An 8-yard carry. So first and 10. The ball is at the 41-yard line. Off the play fake. McCown to throw again. This time deep down the sidelines. Got a man open. Caught. Cherry, 10-5. Touchdown. Jason Cherry, a touchdown reception, 59 yards, and it's 16-0 Hartford. Just over a minute remaining in the first half. Cole Pepper with time, steps up in the pocket, launches it deep down the middle. It's going to be intercepted. Ryan Glasper out of Boston College, the local product, will return it out back across the 30. It is a, a second down. 12 now as McCown back to throw sets up a, a little screen. Booker's got it. He's got a couple of good blocks. First down and more. Booker into the open field. Booker is going to go all the way for a Hartford touchdown. Lorenzo Booker on the screen pass to the left. It winds up an 80 yard touchdown and a 26 0 Hartford lead. Well, Pepper with time to the end zone. Caught touchdown. Nice grab by Joe West. As Culpepper is late to get up as they give the victory pass to Chris Palmer. And the Hartford Colonials inaugural game goes in the win column as they defeat Sacramento here 27 to 10. Now before the Colonials ever played their first game here at Rentschler Field, their fans were already out in full force out in the parking lot taking part in one of the great traditions of any football game, tailgating. Great food, great fun, great games, great people. Right here at Rentschler Field, we got to meet some of them. Let's check it out. We love Harper. Go Colonials. I've never been to a game, so I am so excited to be here. Can you give me a final score for today? Will the Colonials win? Yes or no? Finesse. Better broadcaster than Blongo ball player. We're here with Berkeley, AKA super fan. How about the big crowd here today? Are you, are you surprised? I'm very pleased, very pleased. It's that horse might kick you, you never know. I don't know, they might mix me up with the horse. So you're here to watch your son today, huh? Yeah, right, yep. With all my kids, my relatives. What's it like watching your son out there? Nerve wracking. Yeah. There we go. Oh, oh, this will be a heart attack by the second quarter. There you go. There you go. Be great. Yeah. Go <laughs> oh, yeah, I've come. What brought you out to today's game? Oh, my daughter made the cheerleading team. Uh, 
uh, Harper Colonial, and we're all here to cheer her on. Up next, our weekly conversation with the head coach of the Colonials. Chris Palmer stops by for a few minutes. We'll talk about the week one victory over the Sacramento Mountain Lions. Get his thoughts on Jeff Garcia, the Omaha Nighthawks, the week two opponent for the Colonials. Out at Sage Park, Colonials practice facility with the head coach of the team, Chris Palmer. How you doing? Doing great, and yourself? Doing all right. Listen, it's got to be fun doing these after a victory. <laughs> I don't know if they're fun, you know, having to spend time with you. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Uh, no, it, it's always nice to have a victory, and, uh, you know, we're getting ready for Omaha, and uh, Omaha will be a great test for us. Before we look ahead at Omaha, look back at Sacramento, a lot of good things to talk about. If there was something that bothered you, what was it? I would say the penalties. You know, we had a couple of penalties that hurt us. Uh, you know, Booker had a couple of runs that were called back. Uh, we had a situation where uh, we had a personal foul uh, when the defense was out there that I think helped them score. Uh, you'd like to be a disciplined football team and penalties are a sign of uh, a discipline. So that, that's definitely where I would like to clean up. Uh, I was very happy with our, uh, we took the ball over with the offense and went into our four minute mode with seven minutes left in the game and we came down with about 11 seconds left. So I was pleased with that, but the penalties are some things that we'd like to clean up. Nobody knew what to expect in terms of a crowd. You get over 14,000 people. What was your reaction? I was very happy for you know everyone in the organization. They've worked very, very hard. Uh, and I'm happy for Connecticut. I mean, you know, there's talk this week of uh, the Whalers coming back. Uh, you know, pro, uh, pro hockey coming back. And when people see that we're drawing and you see that the Rockcats are drawing and now hopefully this thing will work out with uh, the hockey team. Uh, you know, Hartford is a great area. Connecticut's a great area. Uh, the thing that was really exciting when I came out and I saw uh, a New England, uh, New England uh, T-shirt next to a New York Giant hat. And I'm saying, where can you go? and uh, have people root for one team, even though they're rooting for two opposite teams uh, on Sunday. What stuck out to me was just how cohesive a unit this was. For a group that's only been together for a month, that has to be kind of surprising. Well, it speaks volumes about the players and how important it is for them. Uh, you know, and I think a lot of it goes back to the people here. You know, they've made the players feel welcome. They've met, made the organization feel welcome. and. I think when there's a bond between the fans and the area and the players, uh, that's uh, the ingredients for success. Look ahead at Omaha. Amon Green, uh, Jeff Garcia, Maurice Claret. Give us a little bit of a, an overview when you look at that team. Veteran players. You know, you look at Green and you look at Garcia, guys that have played in the NFL. Uh, you look at their roster, I think they have 12 guys that are almost as old as you. You know what I mean? Uh, they're uh, in their 30s. You know, Garcia's 40. Uh, you know, Garcia made a comment this week, which I thought was very important. He said the guys are playing because they love playing the game. They're not playing for the money. And that's the type of atmosphere as a coach you love. And, uh, you know, we're, you know we're, we're going into Omaha. They're going to have a sellout. And it'll be a, um, an interesting uh, contest for us. Right. After the game, first time you've ever been double doused. They, they got you twice. Talk, talk a little bit about that. It's, that's it's got to feel good. The water was fine. It was the Gatorade that uh, three days later I touched my glasses and they're still sticky from the Gatorade. So uh, from that standpoint, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was fun. I'm sure the players enjoyed that, but uh, I thought I avoided the first one, but the, the second hit got me. How do the skills of a guy like Josh McCown differ from the skills of a guy like Jeff Garcia? Josh's arm is a little bit stronger than uh, Garcia's at this time. You know, Garcia's 40 years old and uh, he can still play. I mean, he's got uh, uh, great vision. He can see the field. 
Uh, I think he'll nickel and dime his, with his throws. Uh, I think people left our game against Sacramento very impressed with uh, Josh. I think he's throwing more with his body and less with his legs, um, which I think has helped him. Uh, I thought the, he saw the field uh, better in the Sacramento game uh, lead, than leading up to the game. So uh, I think there are two guys that have played in the league. Uh, obviously, Garcia played in Canada, very successful in Canada and in the uh, NFL. So uh, I, I think it'll be a good match between the two of them. Hartford Colonials kickoff rolls on. Joined by Colonials quarterback Josh McCown. All right, you got a win under your belt. I thought this was going to be a running team. What happened? Yeah, you know, uh, we just were taking what the defense was giving us. Um, we were able to still run the ball. Uh, Dre and Book, and those guys did a great job. But uh, but you saw we were able to get outside and uh, make some big plays with Cherry, especially. But um, but that's what we want to be able to do is be balanced and and really. You know, whatever the uh, defense dictates, be able to go to one or the other and feel good about it. You know, you mentioned balance, and it seemed as if you didn't have one particular receiver you keyed in on. It seemed like you really did spread it around. No, and that's that's the beauty of, of what we got going on here is we feel like we've got, you know, a good group of guys that you can you can grab whoever you want and say, okay, hey, give me this route or give me that, and and feel confident in what he's going to do for you. So, uh, from top to bottom with our receiving core, I'm very pleased with where we're at, and it's, and even with our tight ends. So. Um, so I think in that, as that aspect grows and we learn more about each other, we're, we're just going to get more and more confident in, in what we can do as a group. But I'm, I'm happy where we're at right now. Talk a little bit about Ryan Perilou. As a captain on this team, you've kind of played the role of mentor. Right. Has that been fun for you? That's probably the absolutely. first time you've had to do that. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've really enjoyed that, um, to be able to help and give back to the game and specifically to Ryan. You know, uh, Coach hooked us up, made us roommates week one of camp. So. He's been in my hip pocket ever since, and uh, and I love it uh, to be able to give back to him, not only about football, but about life, and just kind of helping him be a well-rounded person. Um, it's been great. A lot of people would say, why come and play in the UFL? You probably could have been a backup in the NFL somewhere. Uh, it does week one and the victory and playing as well as you did in front of that crowd to kind of validate the decision? Uh, it, it makes you feel good about it, but um, but before then, you know, I, like, like I've said all along, I felt like this is where I, I was supposed to be. Um, it was just something in, in my soul that I felt like this is where I needed to be, and so uh, this is where we were. So the, the, the victory makes it feel better, and, 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 and it makes you feel good about it, but it doesn't change. You know, if we'd have lost, I still believe that's who I was supposed to be. I still believe that uh, we're doing the right things here, and so, um, so it just, as a competitor, when you go out and play a game, you want to win. And so that's what it does for me is just we got what we wanted to do accomplished. Your family's back in North Carolina. Yeah. How tough is it being away from home? Yeah, the kids? it's very tough. It's, that's good to have Ryan Parallel around to talk to. So you have a young kid that's asking a bunch of questions, kind of keeps my mind off missing the family. So uh, it, it, it's been good from that respect, but I certainly, certainly miss them. Um, they were up here for the game this weekend, and they'll try to get up uh, for the for the next few games. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to see them. But the way the schedule breaks up, you know, there's enough bye weeks that it, it shouldn't be too bad, but I certainly miss them. Jeff Garcia in Omaha, Culpepper, uh, you know, with Sacramento, Rite, Bollinger. You look at the caliber of quarterback in this league. Have you talked to any of those guys? I mean, other than talking to uh, Dante this past weekend, uh, I haven't really. I know those guys and, uh, you know, I'm sure they're like me. They're excited about the chance to be in a situation where they're playing because they're competitors. So. Uh, I, I think it's great for this league um, to, to continue to grow uh, the competition level and uh, it starts with the quarterback position and so the better that position is going to be you know it's going to raise everybody around it so uh, so I'm excited it, it makes it fun when you look across the roster and the schedule knowing that you're going to have great competitive games. Best of luck this weekend my friend. Thank you so much. One of the most important things that coaches will do in the course of a game week is checking out film. Whether it's last week's game or yesterday's practice, the coaches from the Hartford Colonials are always looking at every edge they can possibly get. This week, an all-access exclusive look inside the film room. Good here, zero tight, slant 37 power direction, take this where Lou. Okay, three techniques, and who do we make the mic? Especially with a weak open end zone. We have to give them the ability to go back side on this. Let's see what he does exactly here. 
So let's make sure we get night tight pass on our zone runs in time. Here at the Colonials, we watch film probably every day. Um, two times a day, three times a day, we come in on our own at night sometimes just to brush up on our opponent, you know, always trying to figure out little tips and, and keys that we can use during the game. Okay, New York Z, zero tied up, 62 double seam, F go, H no. Now you get overextended. Start losing. Be strong with your upfield arm, the left arm, and try to do that shoulder. You know what I'm saying? Right. Just having film is, is, is a good thing. You always, you're able to see yourself on, uh, on the camera, so that, that's always a good way to just critique yourself and just come in and get better. We watch our opponents, like the cornerbacks, you know, we, we uh, watch uh, what kind of feet work they have, uh, if they're like a, a, a zone type corner or if they're man to man, like the press. And, you know, like I said, we have to know these things, you know, because if they do press to press, you know, we do have some plays where we can, you know, readjust and do our thing. And if it's zone, you know, we also have other plays where we can get around them and stuff like that. My point is if the free is shallow, we got to think about taking a shot. If the free is not shallow and he's deep, okay, he's got the ability to run over a go route if we took a shot. But that corner is probably a little further off, so we're thinking the inside. But if we're going to work inside, let's work tomorrow on burying the space a little bit and then sliding up hard in the pocket. The daily practice is kind of reinforced. Um, the, the review work that we do in the film room, um, that, that translates into the game. It helps us play faster because um, the less you have to think on the field, the faster you play. Give me three. Give me three. Come on. Ah. Five. Five. Come on. Woo. Come on, last one. Next up on Hartford Colonials kickoff, we'll hit the gym with the Colonials and meet strength and conditioning coordinator Mark Asanovich, the man responsible, keeping the team strong and healthy for game day. Strength and conditioning is one of the key parts for any professional sports team and especially in the game of football. Mark Asanovich is the head strength and conditioning coach for the Hartford Colonials. Mark, tell us, I guess there's a lot of different ideas of what a strength and conditioning coach is and to some organizations maybe a strength and conditioning coach is different than in others. In the case of football, describe probably your biggest responsibility. Uh, my biggest responsibility to the team is to um strengthen their bodies uh, from a rehabilitative standpoint to prevent injuries because in professional football a player's biggest ability is his durability. Your muscles don't yes. have eyeballs, they don't know what's providing the resistance. You work hard enough, we're going to get some gain. It's not only you're getting stronger, but at the same you're maintaining your strength. So a lot of football players, all of us, we lift in the off season. Uh, we work really hard, so it's, it's about maintaining, but a lot of us are getting stronger. So Coach Asana definitely knows what he's doing. In the broadcasting world, in the media world, we hear so much about trying to prevent injuries through you know, padding and different helmets and, and rules changes and things like that. But you're talking preventative from a completely different perspective. Certainly, um, uh, a joint is only as strong as the muscles that surround the joint. So if you get the muscles stronger, you increase the structural integrity of the joint. So um, uh, every joint on a football field will be exposed to injury, so we have to train every muscle around every joint to uh, prevent injury. As you strength train the musculature, uh, there is a physiological adaptation to the uh, cervical spine as well. It builds up increased bone mineral density. And uh, this will uh, decrease the chance of cervical spine injury as well as concussions. Is it difficult sometimes to get the guys to buy into the whole strength and conditioning thing? Uh, not really. Uh, when it comes from the top, uh, Coach Palmer really emphasizes it and um, the players themselves are very motivated to get better. They're, of course, always looking at it from the performance standpoint. I'm always looking at it from a prehabilitative standpoint. But uh, this group as a whole is very good. How do some of your programs and tactics differ from, from some of the others we'd see probably around sports? I think right now one of the um, uh, misconceptions in sports training is you have to train fast to be fast. And uh, that uh, promotes a lot of orthopedic stress on the joints. And obviously, we're not about increasing orthopedic stress. Football is orthopedically stressful enough. So our movements are very slow, very deliberate. But out on the field, we're very fast. So um, that's, a, that's the biggest difference. Mark Asanovich, strength and conditioning coach. Appreciate the time. Thank you, Jason. 
name is Ben Hanula. Uh, I played for University of San Diego, and I'm a safety. Joe Mortensen, Hartford Colonials, middle linebacker. Uh, went to the University of Kansas. Taylor Melhoff, uh, Minnesota Vikings. I'm the kicker. We're trying to win a championship, and you know you got to take one week at a time, and you got to win. So you know, one and zero, it's great. I think we'll continue to get better week after week. Uh, offensively, defensively, and special teams, all three phases played really well last week, and uh, we just need to continue to improve. The fan support this weekend was great, caught us a little off guard, but it was definitely a pleasant surprise. Um, I think we set a record or something for the most fans, and it'd be great to get even more out there. Just the energy in the stadium was it was big, and you know, we all had fun out there playing. Coach Palmer's really kind of created a good atmosphere here. Um, guys are helping each other out, and I think that's that's key. That's a big part of being successful as a team. What I love about football is just, I think it's, the, it's America's game. It's the greatest game. Best thing about football for me, this is just playing football is what I love to do. The thing I like about football is just the physical contact, hitting people. It's, it's definitely why I play the game. You know, if you take care of business here, play well, do your job, uh, hopefully everyone will get an opportunity to play at the next level. That wraps up another edition of Hartford Colonial's kickoff. For more information, how you can get some tickets, maybe to check out the Colonials right here at Rentschler Field, go to HartfordColonials.com. I'm Jason Page. We'll catch you next week on Hartford Colonials Kickoff.